Hi there, this is Professor Shannon Gracie. We are working on Section 3.4 from Precalculus Enhanced with Graphing Utilities by Sullivan and Sullivan. So today we're going to really just be doing a bunch of different examples where we're building quadratic miles, miles, <laughs> it's been a long day guys, where we're building quadratic models from uh, written descriptions. So uh, let's Let's warm it up by finding the vertex of this quadratic function. So if you feel confident, go ahead and pause the movie. Otherwise, you can just follow along with me. So negative b over 2a equals negative. So our b is negative 1 over 2 times negative 2. So we get positive 1 fourth. And then evaluating the function to get the y coordinate, we evaluate the function at a quarter and we'll get negative 2 times 1 fourth squared minus 1 fourth. Oh, and my mistake, there's three negatives here, so it'll be negative 1 fourth. Add that in there. And then we'll have plus 5. So f at negative 1 fourth will be negative 2 times 1 16th minus and minus is plus 1 fourth plus 5. This 2 divides out some of the 16. So we need, we have an LCD of 8. So if I multiply the 4 by 2 over 2, and 5 by 8 over 8, we will have f at negative 1 fourth will be negative 1 eighth plus 2 eighths plus 40 eighths. And our end result for the y coordinate will be 41 eighths. So the vertex will be at negative 1 fourth, positive 41 eighths. How'd you do? Awesome. All right. Let's go on to example one. So we've given up, we've been given a price function in dollars and a quantity that X is sold of a certain product. And these obey this demand equation. So we need to find a model that expresses the revenue R as a function of X. So in general, revenue is equal to price times number of units. So revenue in X alone will be P, which is negative one-third X plus 100 times X. So R at X will be equal to negative one-third X squared plus 100x. So this gives us our revenue function in terms of the number of items sold. Okay, so what is the domain of R? Okay, so we, ha we know that the number of units has to be greater than or equal to zero, and the price has to be greater than or equal to zero. So this leads us to, uh, if we plug in uh, the function of x for price, and if we say that that has to be greater than or equal to zero, we will get the upper end of our domain. So negative one-third x plus 100, so I'm plugging in that for P, has to be greater than or equal to zero. So this gives us that negative one-third X has to be greater than or equal to negative 100. Now if you multiply, remember, by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality. So multiplying by negative three, we will get X is less than or equal to 300. So combining that with the fact that x has to be greater than or equal to 0, our domain will be from 0 to 300 inclusive. Or you could write this as x 
such that 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 300 in set notation. Okay. So now, what is the revenue if 100 units are sold? So our revenue function was given above. So revenue at 100 will be equal to negative 1 third times 100 squared plus 100 times 100. So if we break out our graphing calculator, we will have negative one-third times 100 squared plus 100 times 100. We will get a revenue of 6,666 and 67 cents when 100 items are sold. So, And that's in dollars. So if you want to do it separately, that's approximate. OK, so now we want to know what quantity will maximize revenue. Well, now we need to find the input value of the vertex. So negative b over 2a, our original revenue function, was up here. So that would be B is 100, and then A is negative 1 third. So that will, that will give us the negatives will go away, and we'll end up getting, I believe, is it 150? Yes, so a quantity of 150 items will maximize the revenue. Okay. So, part E, what price should the company charge to maximize revenue? Well, remember our price equation was negative one-third X plus 100. So what we'll be doing is plugging in the 150 into this price equation. So this gives us a result of P equals 50, so they should charge $50 to maximize revenue. All right, so our next example, a farmer with 2,000 meters of fencing wants to enclose a rectangular plot that borders on a straight highway. If the farmer does not fence the side along the highway, what is the largest area that can be enclosed? So let's get a picture of what's going on. So basically, we've got a rectangular plot going on. And this here is the, is the highway. Whoops. Is the highway. So if you call this x, x, and y, basically, you've got 2,000 meters of fencing, and so 2,000 would be 2x's plus 1y. So now we want to maximize the area or find the maximum area. So remember that area in terms of both x and y is equal to just x times y. So do you see here that what we can do is we can isolate y and write it in terms of x if we subtract 2x from both sides. 
so our area in terms of x alone is x times 2,000 minus 2x. So we get area in terms of x is 2,000x minus 2x squared. And if we write that in descending order, we'll have negative 2x squared plus 2,000 times x. Okay, so now we have something which is uh, quadratic in form. So what we can do is we can go over here and start doing using the skills for that we've learned to find the maximum points or minimum points for quadratics. So negative b over 2a is negative 2,000 divided by 2 times negative 2 which is 50. Oh, my mistake, 500, 500. So what does that mean? That means when x is 500, when x is 500, that will yield the maximum area. So let's see what they asked us for. They only asked us for the largest area. So we need to continue. We need to evaluate our area function at 500. So our area function, remember, was negative 2 times x, so 500 squared, plus 2,000 times 500. So the area at 500 will be, get your calculators, So negative 2, oops, got to turn it on there, negative 2 times 500 squared plus 2,000 times 500 equals 500,000. So let's answer the question, given these conditions, the largest area that can be enclosed is 500,000 square meters. Okay, next up, a parabolic arch has a span of 120 feet and a maximum height of 25 feet. So we need to choose suitable rectangular axes and find an equation of the parabola. And then we need to calculate the height of the arch at these different input values. So we can make a picture of our arch. And I don't know about you guys, but I think the easiest axis will be if this ordered pair here is our vertex, and that would have an input of 0 and a height of 25, given this information. Now, we know we have symmetry, so a span of 120 feet means that there will be 60 feet on each side. So this ordered pair would be 60, 0, and this one would just be negative 60, 0 by symmetry. So here we go. So f at x is equal to a times x minus h, the quantity squared, plus k. We have h and k. h is 0, since we set our axis like that, and k is 25. 
So then we'll have f at x is a x squared plus 25. Now we'll use the information about the ordered pair 60 comma 0. So if I set f at x equal to 0 and plug in 60 for x, I will get that I will be able to solve for a. So negative 25 will be 3600 times a. And dividing both sides by 3600, I isolate a. And that ends up reducing to negative 1 over 144 is a. That's a negative. So we now have our function f at x is equal to negative 1 over 144 times x squared plus 25. So we need to now evaluate our function at these input values. So f at 10 will be equal to negative 1 over 144 times 10 squared plus 25. So negative 1 divided by 144 times 10 squared plus 25 equals approximately 24.3 feet. So this is approximately 24.3 feet. Now f at 20. Same setup, except we plug in 20 for x. And here again, I'm going to use the second enter feature on the calculator. And then we just change the 10 to 20. And we get approximately 22.2 .2 feet. F at, thir at 40 will be negative 1 over 144 times 40 squared plus change the 20 to 40, and we get approximately 13.9 feet. All right, so we're all set with that problem. <laughs> How are you guys doing so far? <laughs> okay, so example four, I think this is our last, uh, our last one for this section. Um, so this guy is a uh, projectile problem. So projectiles fired at an inclination of 45 degrees to the horizontal with the muzzle velocity of 100 feet per second. So the height is modeled by this function here, where x is the horizontal distance of the projectile from the firing point. So at what horizontal distance from the firing point is the height of the projectile a maximum? So what are they asking us for? You got it. They are asking us for the input needed to yield the maximum height. So this is a quadratic equation. Let's find the x-coordinate of the vertex. So negative b over 2a is negative 1 over 2 times negative 32 over 100 squared. So that's going to be, the negatives go away. We'll have 100 squared over 64. And let's see what that is. So 100 squared divided by 64 is 156.25. So that's exactly 156.25 feet. So that horizontal distance yields the maximum height of the projectile. 
find the maximum height. So now we are going to um, evaluate H at 156.25. So that'll be negative 32 times 156.25 squared over 100 squared plus 156.25. So, negative 32 times 156.25 squared divided by 100 squared and then plus 156.25 is 78.125. So H at 156.25 is, what was that again? 78.125. and we're in feet. And so that is the maximum height of the projectile. At what horizont horizontal distance from the firing point will the projectile strike the ground? Well, you just find the zero. So let's see what our original function was again. Negative 32x squared over 100 squared. So negative 32x squared over 100 squared plus x. I'm going to double check that. We're good. So we will have You can factor out, I'm just going to factor out a negative x, and then I'll be left with 32x over 100 squared plus 1. Actually, if I factor out a negative, it'll be minus 1. So, negative x is 0, which would give us x is 0, or 32x over 100 squared minus 1 is 0. So solving this guy, I would have 32x over 100 squared is 1. So 32x would be equal to 100 squared. So x would be 100 squared over 32. So let's see what that is. three hundred twelve point five so x is three hundred twelve point five feet and let's go ahead and answer the well we did answer the question at three hundred twelve point five feet the projectile will hit the ground Okay, so now let's go ahead and graph this equation. So I'm going to go back to what the original equation was, and they're advising us to use a window from 0 to 350, so we shall do so. So let's see. Window 0 to 350. And what was our maximum height so that we know what to do our y value in? was just 78.125. So for the y maximum, we'll just do um, 80. And then y equals is 
negative 32 times x squared divided by 100 squared plus x. All right, let's see what it looks like. Nice. So there's our, our graph, and let's see what they wanted us to do with it. So here's the initial, the initial graph. Okay, so let's go ahead. We went for the y, we went from 0 to 80, and then on the x, we went from 0 to 350. And um, so that's what the graph looks like. And then it asked us to verify the results obtained in parts B and C. So let's see, what did we find in B and C? Oh, we found the max height, and then we found the zeros. So for part B, if we go here, let's go ahead and go second, calculate maximum, and then make sure you're to the left. Not sure where, there it is. And then you need to be the right, to the right of the max. And then, as you see, it verified our maximum. So this was the verification for part, for part B. And then let's take a look at uh, part C was finding the zero. So second, calculate zero. So we know that we've got that one at zero, zero. So let's just verify this one over here. So the left bound, enter. Enter. And 312.5. So that's uh, what we got for, for the zeros. Let's go ahead and paste that. So look at that. We were right. How awesome is that? And all we used was the calculator in our brain. Well, we used some of the regular calculator too. <laughs> okay, so that was, uh, so here we had verification for part B and part C. Okay, so now when the height of the projectile is 50 feet above the ground, how far has it traveled horizontally? So now what we, need, what we need to do is we need to, there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm going to go ahead and graph a horizontal line of y2 equal to 50. So then if you graph this, what you can do is find those intersection points. So if you go to second, calculate, intersect, then we have two spots where it happens. So we'll get n more nearby. So enter, enter, enter. And we get an intersection at 60. When x is 62.5, y is 50. So x is 62.5. And then we'll do the second one and then paste it. Actually, we can paste this one, too. And then coming back and doing it again, we have got to get closer to the other one or else it'll give us the same result. Okay.
and when x is 250, we'll be at a height of 50 feet. So, when x, whoops, when x is 250 feet. And we'll paste this one too. Okay, so what do you know? We're all done with this section. So have a fabulous evening, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.